Olympic Games of the all-time series. And now let's go to the public address announcer here at Assembly Hall, Jim Shepard. I'm Jim Shepard, and welcome to the Assembly Hall, home of the Fighting Illini. Let's now meet the starting lineups for tonight's Big Ten contest between the Iowa Hawkeyes and Illinois. For Iowa at a forward, a 6'5 sophomore from Flint, Michigan, number 23, Roy Marble. For the Illini at a forward position, a 6'8 senior from Chicago, number 33, Ken Norman. At forward for the Hawkeyes, a 7-foot senior from Glendale, Arizona, number 54, Brad Lojas. At forward for Illinois, a 6'4 junior from Highland Park, Michigan, number 21, Glenn Blackwell. At center for Iowa, a 6'8 sophomore from Springfield, Illinois, number 25, Ed Horton. For the Illini, a 6'7 sophomore from Chicago, number 45, Lowell Hamilton. At a guard for Iowa, a 6'6 senior from Springfield, Illinois, number 35, Kevin Gamble. At a guard for Illinois, a 5'10 senior from Peoria, number 10, Tony Weisinger. At a guard for the Hawkeyes, a 6'2 sophomore from Detroit, Michigan, number 10, B.J. Armstrong. And at a guard for the Illini, a 6'4 senior from Peoria, number 22, Doug Altenberger. Iowa is coached by Tom Davis, the Illini by Lou Henson. The officials for tonight's Big Ten game, Ted Hillary, Phil Robinson, and Richard Weiler. We've got the officials for this evening's game. Starting lineups and coaches. Want to remind you, there, Bill Robinson, Rich Weiler in the middle. Want to remind you that you can read about all the players and coaches of the Big Ten this year by ordering your copy of the Big Ten Basketball Yearbook. This colorful 64-page publication is a must for every Big Ten fan, especially watching big setting action here on the Big Ten TV network. To get your book, just send $6 to Big Ten Yearbook, Fisher, Illinois, 61843-0010. Tremendous excitement in this building here tonight as the Fighting Illini in the solid white jerseys with the blue and orange trim and get set to face the Iowa Hawkeyes gold numbers with the black jerseys. Take a look at some of the numbers. Comparison coming in here, Steve. I think really rebounding is going to be a key in this ball game. Iowa's held a hefty advantage over their opponents. Illinois is split even about off the boards. Well, that 13 rebound uh, per game uh, advantage puts them, I believe, number one in the country. Certainly on both ends of the floor, that'll be a big statistic throughout the ball game. And the Illini control the opening tap. This is Kenny Norman, number 33, wide open. Come the Hawkeyes. This will be a very fast-paced game on a defensive end. Illinois in their man-to-man defense. They will do nothing tricky in this ball game. They're going to play it straight, man-to-man all the way. Lowhouse in the lane, tied up for a moment. It shot off the mark. Rebound, fuck four, knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Doug Oldenberger of the Illini. There's the series. They split 100 games since 1908. Ed Horton inside. Low house on the rebound. He's been averaging eight a game, and he cashes in. At the preseason press conference, rebounding was one of the big concerns for uh, for Tom Davis with his Iowa ball club. Uh, probably the most pleasant surprise has been Lowhouse. It's an area of his game that has never really come to the surface. He's their leading rebounder now on the season. Steve, they've moved him from the pivot to a forward position. He's much more comfortable there. No question about it. Rebound taken down low by Roy Marble. This is Armstrong ahead. Gamble, three-point shot. Yes. No, they're going to give him two. Apparently, he had a foot on the line. Kevin Gamble, a much improved outside shooter for Iowa. Again, Iowa will push the ball down the floor on both made and missed field goals. 
and they will look for the three-point field goal right now. If it's open, they'll take it, and then they crash the board. Hamilton up high. Weisinger open at the baseline. take the lead. Wayne, defensively, Iowa is a team that plays a lot of zones generally. They're going to, in this ball game, play man for man as long as they can. If they cannot stop Norman and Hamilton in one-on-one -on -one situations, they'll go to the zone. Here is Hamilton. Rebound loose on the floor for a moment. Horton takes it away. B.J. Armstrong, Campbell on the drive. Gamble now has four points. There's that quick transition again, Steve. Well, if you haven't seen Gamble play, that uh, that play alone gives you an idea of the athletic talent he's got. A three-point shooter from the perimeter with the ability to put it on the floor and take it to the hoop with quickness and strength. Weisinger gives up the shot. Hamilton is off the mark inside. Here come the Hawkeyes, B.J. Armstrong. Blowhouse from deep. He's got that range. Blackwell corners the rebound. Transition. Weisinger trying to force it inside. Norman with the hustle gets it back. First foul of the ball game is called on Ed Horton. Pushing foul on Horton. It's his first. In Illinois' two losses, Wayne, one at North Carolina. That was a game where their entire team pretty much wore down physically in the second half of the ball game. And the Loyola loss, from what I understand, Kenny Norman individually wore down in the second half. This is a very uh, fast-paced game right now. It may take its toll in the second 20 minutes. And as we mentioned, Steve, they may have to go to the bench a little more frequently than before. Ottenberger off the mark from deep. Here come the Hawkeyes again. This is Jeff Moe. Moe house down low. Moe from the outside. Hamilton the rebound. <laughs> there will not be much time to catch your breath. If you like college basketball, you'll love this game. It will be 40 solid minutes of non-stop action. And they'll use all of 94 feet here tonight, Steve. I got a feeling. This is Altenberger wide open outside. Three-point shot by Altenberger. We saw him hit four in a row Saturday. Low house from deep. Can you believe He's this? Got me. They may make it two. Yes, the officials conferring. They're going to call it a two-point shot. Apparently, he had a foot on the line. Difficult for us to say, see, but I like it when officials are not afraid to overrule one another. They need to do that to keep the game uh, played uh, at its cleanest. Tom Davis arguing in rather animated fashion, but to no avail. It is a two-point shot. If you have not seen Iowa play under Tom Davis, know this. They will pressure full court the entire ball game. They have an interesting substitution system. Their players take themselves out of the ball game when they get tired. When they rejuvenate, they're allowed to put themselves back in. Trieva loses the handle for a moment, gets it back on the tap It's Hamilton. Quickly come the Hawkeyes, and Jeff Moore ran out of real estate as he fumbled on the pass. Hawkeye turnover gives it back to the Illini, who lead by one, four minutes into the first half. The last two offensive possessions for Illinois have been somewhat surprising to me. On one, I, the Iowa defense uh, allowed a three-point unmolested field goal attempt that went down. And on that one, right, on that uh, last possession, they got the offensive tip in. An area where they get beat very seldom. Tony Weisinger, number 10, working against Jeff Moe of Iowa. Kenny Norman in the corner. Weisinger way outside from three-point range. Five points for Weisinger. The lead is four for Illinois. You can see Tom Davis off the bench. That time an Illinois player hit the ball as it went through the basket. Obviously.
Obviously, they'll do that to prevent Iowa from getting it in quickly and getting it down the floor. You're watching the Iowa Hawkeyes, ranked second in the nation on offense. This is Lohaus, 54, Gamble, number 35, Jeff Moe at the point, number 20. B.J. Armstrong in the corner. Come pushing away from the ball, no foul call. Now we've got a whistle away. Jens Kuyova, the big seven-footer for Illinois, picks up the first Illini foul of the evening. Again, defensively, Illinois is going to play a very straight, vanilla-type offense. Man-to-man, -man, stay between your man and the basket, no double-teaming. 15-09 left to go, first half of play. The Illini lead it by four. We'll be back with more Big Ten basketball after these local messages. Going first half of play, 15-09 left to go, Illinois leading by four. Again, the only real surprise to me up till now uh, has been the Iowa defense on a couple occasions. Let Altenberger uh, get free in the corner for an unmolested three-pointer. In the last possession, Weisinger again, unmolested three-pointer. Obviously, you have to recognize Weisinger has the ability to go around you, so you have to give him a little bit of room uh, in that three-point area. But there's no secret on Altenberger. He's going to fire from out there if you lay off him. Hawkeyes on the attack. Gary Wright in the ball game with the finger roll. It won't go on the hook shot. Norman the rebound, here comes Weisinger, the alley of Kuyama! Blocked on the play by Lohaus, who leads the team in blocks for the Hawkeyes. His 21st block of the season. It'll belong to Illinois. You know, if you've seen Lohaus play throughout his career, you take a look at him and say, hey, here's a kid that can run, jump, he's quick, he can shoot. Why hasn't he been a great player? Plus, he's seven feet tall. Look at the hustle here. Great, great block. Back live, Altenberger has hit his second three-point shot in the Illinois seven largest of the evening for either team billy jones number 14 in the lineup now for iowa here's gary wright you see Wright's hand bandaged he broke a couple bones and every knuckle in his hand in an accident during the uh, uh preseason iowa's showing some patience here to set off offense steve and you know what that tells you is that illinois is playing great defense they will take the first open shot they get Anytime they have to work it around, uh, it's a good defensive effort. Ten to go on the shot clock, and Jones sets it up out of the point. Six to go, Jones on the jumper. Oh, yeah. Woo -hoo -hoo. He has six points. Iowa back to within five as Weisinger sets it up for Illinois. All right, off the timeout now, Iowa in his own defense. They would like, throughout the course of the year, to be a balanced team defensively. They want to play the zone and man both effectively. Altenberger off the mark on the three-point try. Hawkeyes on the run. Billy Jones with the penetration. Nicely done. Four unanswered points of the Hawkeyes have cut a seven-point deficit down to three, but here comes Weisinger right back at it. Low Hamilton. I'll tell you something. Illinois is not afraid to run. That was a very interesting uh, exchange right there. Off the defensive pressure, they attacked the basket and were successful. Here come the fighting Illini once again. Weisinger from deep. Lowhaus cleans up the rebound. Lowhaus will play in the NBA, believe me. Good play by Kenny Norman to pry it loose. Hamilton's ahead of the field. before the shot, I believe. It was hard to hear that whistle, I want to tell you. Tom Davis is much like uh, Bob Knight at Indiana in that neither one of those two coaches will call a timeout necessarily when the other team is on a run. Their teams are very well schooled. They're very well organized. Tom Davis that time called a set play, did not take a timeout, it was executed to perfection. First personal foul on low. Hamilton second on the team. There's a look at the field goal shooting and the three-point shots. Illinois three of five from three-point range. And talking with Bruce Pearl, the assistant for Iowa before the game, I told him after we talked about all the different matchups and whatever, I said, I think this game is going to come down to three-point field goals. B.J. 
Jay Armstrong. There's Horton out high for Iowa, out of the post. Altenberger's on Horton right now. Lorenzen's in the ball game for Iowa. He draws the coverage of Kenny Norman. Iowa again showing some patience on offense. Jeff Moe, good shooter for the outside. They'd like to go down low to Marble, looks like, Steve. Now Marble comes back outside. Seven to go on the shot clock. DJ Armstrong will have to hurry, and he's fouled. Boy, that's a big mistake. We've only got another seven, six, seven seconds to play defense. It's going to be difficult for them to get off a good shot unhurried. Fouled from 20 feet from the basket. Steve Bardo picks up his first third on the team and watch it again. Now you see Altenberger, he made a good defensive move, just a little bit slow in getting to the spot. Armstrong got a chance to go down the sideline. 11.59 left to be played first half. Illinois still leading by seven and we'll be back with more first half action after this on the Big Ten Television Network. Play right here. Kenny Norman triggering the steal, Steve, and then Weisinger feeding ahead. Well, very interestingly, Illinois, we talked about their ability to handle the defensive pressure. They have no turnovers in this ball game. Iowa has three. That has resulted in seven Illinois points. Uh, you saw uh, the big turnaround. When you got two teams that run the ball, a change of possession in a turnover situation on the perimeter is devastating because everybody's going the wrong way on defense. And, of course, Weisinger now with six assists in this first half of play. There's the points off turnover story, and the lead is seven for Illinois. Iowa will be on the attack when we resume. Now Lorenzen inbounding. There's Tom Davis. What an outstanding job he's done in his first year in Iowa. Previous had coached at Lafayette, Boston College, and Stanford. And he was a winner at all three. Yes, sir. Rebuilt the programs at both Stanford and Boston College. And he made Stanford... Uh, Respectable. Yeah, they were competitive, and, and that's all the better they could get. Marble on the back door couldn't handle the pass. Great. Lorenzen Great. inside, and Marble has improved so much as a passer this season. That time he found Lorenzen. Well, Marble is a tremendously unselfish player. When you are the best player on the team, your performance is of utmost importance because your performance and the way you play sets the tone for the way the rest of the team plays. He played in a great high school program up in Flint, Michigan, and Tom Davis told us before the game that that's why he's so sound in all aspects of the game. I'd also mention Al Lorenzen with the layup there. He's had a lot of uh, trouble getting off the mark this year offensively. Bardo. Sometimes a, an early layup will get you going. Marble off the mark on the try down low. The rebound, Hamilton. Illinois comes back the other way. Bardo broke up that fast break. The Hawkeyes were going to the hoop in a hurry. Bardo made a good play in the middle of the floor. Now, this is Steve Bardo, number 35. One of the things that we're trying to keep track of also is now you see Bardo, the freshman, in the game for Tony Weiser. He's got to play uh, tonight to play effectively. We're going to keep uh, points scored uh, while Weisinger is on the bench and Bardo's running the offense. That's Kenny Norman, the sneak inside, has six points and three from the field. Here comes B.J. Armstrong. Lorenzen quickly gets it inside. Horton, he couldn't handle it. And Horton lost the handle on it. Off the turnover, the Illini get it back. Turnovers by Iowa, helping to fuel the Illinois lead. The mistake Lorenzen made right there just had a real bad angle for that pass. Needed to put it on the floor, get a little bit further out on the wing, and get the proper angle. Iowa again with that backcourt pressure, Steve. It's ever present. And as you see, Weisinger right back in the ball game off the turnover. It's really a good move by Lou Hanson. During the timeout, put Bardo in, gave Weisinger another minute off, and got two and a half minutes out of it with the TV timeout. Weisinger from deep three-point range. His second three-pointer, he has eight points in the game. Quickly, Iowa in transition sets up the offense. Lorenzen out of the point. B.J. Armstrong trying to spin away. Lorenzen, Horton out high. Horton lost down the dribble. I'm surprised, Steve, that they've had Ed Horton outside as much. He's an inside player. Well, in this 
In this offense, you play a lot of different positions, inside, outside. They want to keep that defense moving. If you can make the defense swing from side to side, that's when you're most likely to catch them out of position. You're not going to see Iowa in a set-up offense very often, and when you do, you're not really going to see a true post, I guess. Yeah. Norman on the Woo! That's always the most difficult call in basketball. And Horton picks up his second personal foul. That's the second on the team. Kenny Norman now with eight points in this first half of play. Head to the line. And Iowa changing up personnel once again. Billy Jones back into the lineup along with Gary Wright. One of the things you have to remember about Iowa, you know, they did not have a whole lot of, they had a lot of people back, but B.J. Armstrong, uh, was not a starter last year and just a sophomore. They hit the low house was never a consistent starter. They've got three or four guys in the lineup that were never consistent starters. As a result, on occasion, they've been a slow starting ball club. And obviously, uh, they're in one of those stretches right now. They certainly are. A line eye up by 13 as the Hawkeyes set up offensively. Gary Wright, number three, broke his hand prior to the start of the practice this fall. Got a foul on Hamilton, a little too physical on the ground. second personal fourth on the team. Things getting a little heated up under the basket. The Illinois making a change now. In their lineup as a Blackwell comes out and now Jens Kuyava back into the game replacing Hamilton who has two personal fouls as I mentioned a moment ago. Blackwell and Jones got a little got a little uh, Heated discussion underneath the basket. Oftentimes, what will happen when you've got an offense that runs so many picks, guys will cut each other off, and there's a lot of physical contact. They can't get out of hand. Gary Wright stayed right with it for two, and a foul down low. Gary Wright's first two points. We're going to get another look at it. This is a great effort, Steve. Well, again, uh, you know, blocking out is the key to rebounding. Illinois, we saw in that Northwestern game, got beat on the boards early in that uh, ball game. But again, nothing replaces jumping ability. Gary Wright is probably, at his height, the best athlete in all of college basketball. Well, yeah. he's got a back for two! without question the most improved performer on the Iowa squad and again watch this rebound Iowa does it so well on the offensive glass well Iowa's about to get back in this ball game from right underneath their own basket believe me this kid you know, for whatever reason just never found his game uh, under Luke Olsen or George Ravling but he will play in the NBA. I think the key for him has been the move to the forward position. He has more of an outside game than something down low on the pivot. This is okay, the oh, Nearly made it. A six-point possession. Weisinger comes back on the top. Oh, the possession. Hawkeyes set up once again. Some... Sometimes great athletic ability can work to your disadvantage. That time Jerry Wright tried to dunk that follow-up, missed it, and it results in two points down at the other end. Rojas tried to slam it off the shin, and he did successfully off the shin of Kenny Norman. Look at the foul situation. Two fouls on the Iowa Hawkeyes, both on Ed Horton. 16 fouls on Illinois, including two on Hamilton and two on Cuyava. You know, there's... There's, there are so many great plays being made on both ends and so quickly it's uh, I haven't seen anything quite like this in a while. Fresh into the ball game, Phil Coons makes the steal on the out of bounds play by the Hawkeyes. Tony Weisinger sets it up for Illinois. Three seconds. This is Doug Altenberger, number 22. There's Blackwell. Inside Norman in the paint. Coons the rebound. Norman trying to keep it alive. And Jones chases down for the Hawkeyes. This is Lohas, three-point shot. 
Well, I'll tell you what, this is one of the more impressive first-half performances I've seen all year. Uh, the one Lohas is putting on right now. Lohas came in, hit 8 out of 23 three-point shots. There's the other Big Ten game going on tonight, one of the other games. Illinois did a great job that time. They seemed very patient, broke the full-court pressure, they're into their half-court off. Oh, Norman should have shot that. Jones didn't have much of a shot, and Gary Wright makes the rebound for Iowa. Here comes Jones. The ability to shoot the three-pointer brings a big forward and center away from the basket, lending more offensive rebounding opportunities for the Hawkeyes. Kevin Gamble lost it out of play. When we resume, the Illini will be on the attack with 7.27 to go, first half of play. Illinois leading by eight. Big Ten basketball continues after these messages from your local station. Tony Weisinger doing his thing as we get a look at the Budweiser scoreboard. I'll tell you what, there's no replacing speed and quickness in basketball and a situation where a player can use that speed and quickness to get you an easy basket. You know, you take a look. Iowa operates very well when they can run down the floor and get a quick shot. But when you have great defense being played, you can see they struggle a little bit. When you've got that one player who can get that one-on-one -on -one move for you, it's really uh, to your benefit. There's the rebounding story. Iowa with a big advantage off the offensive board and quickly on the inbounds. We've got a whistle, apparently. The inbounds, Altenberger stepped on the line, apparently. It's either that or traveling. Um, okay, did he call traveling on it? I guess he did. Low house on the inbounds. Ed Horton in the lane. So you make that the Coons got a piece of him and the foul is called. Bill Coons picks up his first personal seven on the team. And Steve will get another look at this one. Off their out of bounds play, Iowa has a number of different choices. They can throw to either corner. First they'll look for the lob. That time the lob was open. Horton showed you great athletic ability, changing his shot in midair to draw the foul. missed three in a row from the charity strike here. Of course, All three free throws, matter of fact. Of course, Illinois fans will remem remember Ed Horton. He was Mr. Basketball senior year in Illinois. Lansier High School in Springfield. Aldenberger brings down the board, and Tony Weisinger, guarded by Jeff Moe, works it across. Blackwell from deep in the corner. Oh, wow, sending the black shirts around that basketball on the rebound. Now that's the chance you take when you shoot off the uh, transition like that. No offensive rebound. B.J. Armstrong gets it to go on the force. Full court pressure once again. Standard by Iowa, but the Illini break it across. Good speed from Blackwell to Coons. The lead remains eight points now. Now that's got to kill Tom Davis. Six points now scored. In those type of situations where they've beaten the press and taken it to the hoop. Mo tied up by Coons and the jump ball indication. Gonna go to Iowa on the alternating possession. There's Mo and Coons ties him up. Nearly stripped the ball away. Again, the point there is when you talked about the Iowa players being away from the basket. In this offense, you can end up playing any position on the floor. Ohio's with a Hail Mary type of shot and the ball off Iowa. Knocked out of bounds either by Horton or Gamble. But the Illini get it back. Tom Davis not at all happy with the way things are going in the first half. Blackwell tries it loose from Armstrong. Now they've got the break in Weisinger. Is he having a great game or what? Weisinger now with from the field. He's got 12 points in the game. Armstrong coming right back. Norman the rebound. Blackwell in transition. Illini with a three and one. Altenberger on the drive. Blocked by Lowhouse. Sensational defensive play by Lowhouse. He runs the floor so well, Steve, for a big guy. And, you know, he never gets tired. Here's a seven-footer running the floor with everybody else, never getting tired. Look at that hustle. You know, Tom Davis said uh, rather coyly, well, he runs the floor pretty well, but I tell you what, he really runs the floor well. You know, the more, it's, it's real interesting, you talk to the coaches that, that have the really good teams in the country, and they hardly ever talk about the good things that their teams do. They're always saying, we have to do this, we have to do that. 
They're all staying back. <laughs> I guess what you have to note is obviously that both of these teams have the ability to hurt you from every position on the floor and in every phase of the game. And this is truly a great basketball game. Blackwell on the feed. Final. Good ball movement by Illinois. That's great. seen any evidence of Lohas being a little bit tired. And at that time he threw that pass before he really had a chance to look to see if his teammate was open. Steve Tom Davis runs his team so that a player can ask to be taken out and he'll get back in when he needs to or wants to get back in. Marble has it rejected out of bounds in Long Iowa. Hawkeyes trailing by 12 with 5.28 to go first half. Iowa, I'm sorry, Illinois at least on occasion has done a great job when they get defensive position down low of not trying to attempt to block the guy maintains position and looks for defensive help mo and lowhouse leave gamble and lorenzen back in for iowa lorenzen looking inside first gives it to gamble makes the move to the lane good feed down low horton he was fouled on the drive horton piercing the lane that time you're just going to see the end of this play. What you don't see is Gamble's ability in a very tight, congested area has the ability to put it on the floor, penetrate the traffic, and make a great pass over just a two-foot area. Barton missed his first two at the line. Connects right here. Bardo picked up his second personal foul. The team is over the limit. Only two team fouls on the Iowa Hawkeyes, both on Ed Horton. Horton makes good on a pair at the line. Full court pressure again by Iowa. Bardo looking at the inbounds finds Weisinger. This is the man they want against the press, right? There's no question. Eddie Norman shaking loose over Horton. 11 points now for Kenny Norman. DJ Armstrong right back. Lorenzen has a decent outside shot. Armstrong now sets it up. But see, with Lorenzen in there and Lohas out, Lorenzen's not a threat from that spot. Traveling the call on Armstrong, another Iowa turnover. We'll have to see that one again. I'd have to see that one again. And I, you're going to look at it again. I thought Armstrong just came to a jump stop. Watch. That's just a jump stop, I think. Old court pressure again by the Hawkeyes. I'm entitled to my opinion, whether right or wrong. It looked right? like a jump stop. I didn't think he moved the pivot, but you're right. We had the benefit of a slow motion replay, though. They oh, called sure. it live. <laughs> oh, sure. I'll tell you what. It's a lot easier from where we're sitting to call a foul. This game's being played uh, a little bit ahead of normal speed. Three-pointer by Weisinger. His third three-pointer of the first half. Now, he's having a career first half. He and Lawhouse are really the two big stories for each of their respective ball clubs. 15 points for Weisinger in the first half. And this crowd is up. These are the Iowa Hawkeyes, ranked second in the nation on the attack. The last time Illinois had a little bit of a run going, remember, Iowa dominated the offensive board, got three offensive putbacks in the span of about 30 seconds. Hawkeyes showing patience once again. Lorenzo, a little penetration there. Outstanding defensive. Uh... Is it patience, or are they just not comfortable setting up? Horton makes that uh, gamble missing from deep, and here come the fighting Illini, Tony Wise. I don't know how you stop him right now. Timeout, Hawkeyes. They are on their feet here at the Assembly Hall in Champaign, Illinois. Fighting Illini in command with 3.39 to go. We'll be back after this on the Big Ten Television Network. The cast of tonight's game is authorized by the Big Ten Conference and is intended solely for the private use of our viewing audience. Any rebroadcast, reproduction, or other use of the accounts or descriptions of this game without the express written consent of the Big Ten Conference is strictly prohibited. Get a look at the Illini huddle across the way. Wayne Larrabee and Steve Grody were at the Assembly Hall in Champaign. You know, they're... 
the action is so fast paced it's difficult to pick out one any one area but certainly uh, this gives you a pretty decent indication of, of where the balance of the game lies right now again illinois one of illinois big uh, objectives in this ball game was not to give up any easy baskets and other than on occasion an offensive putback they've given up no easy basket as a follow-up to that graphic you saw in the shooting statistics overall Illinois has hit their last four in a row while Iowa's missed its last four Hawkeyes on the attack kind of a lazy pass taken away by Oldenberger nine turnovers now Steve Bardo they're beginning to pile up aren't they they certainly are in a, you know in a game like this and when you're down 17 points Every possession begins to become a little more important. Oh, I thought for sure Alberger would shoot. Yes, out. sir. He was giving he room out there, wasn't he? He hear the reaction from the crowd. <laughs> he said the same thing. You were leaning over, and so were they. I mean, that's like uh, any, anybody else passing up a layup. Now Marble comes out on Altenberger. Altenberger gets it right back from three. Jones has the rebound. Did he come over the top? Yes, he did. He pushed off on the rebound. Laws has position. I talk about it so often, what teams try to do when they come out of a timeout. It appeared on this occasion, what they tried to do was just run the offense until they were able to get it inside to Kenny Norman. Uh, what they ended up with was an isolated situation where Norman was inside, Altenberger outside, forcing the defense to play one or the other. Three-point field goal uh, just did not go down. And Coons uh, fouls on the rebound. His second personal foul. Team is under the limit. You're looking at Brad Lohan. Glendale, Arizona, connecting on his first. He now has 12 points of this first half of play. Here's Lou Henson. Oh, house for 13, and he's got it. Iowa now trailing 44-29, 2.45 to go in the first half. Position apparently. B.J. Armstrong picks up the foul. Let's see if we can pick it up. That's a good call. Sure was. He did not have position. B.J. picks up his first. That is the third on Iowa. Only the third on the Hawkeyes of this first half of play. Illinois leading by 15. Here's the lead to Kenny Norman. Norman guilty of the foul as he pushed off and had charity's drive all three of his points from there played forward last year moved over to the center position very comfortable playing the, the center position for iowa although as we found here tonight it's not exactly a low post pivot pressure by the hawkeyes and it'll belong to illinois boy they make you work for it don't they they really do uh, again illinois has not i don't know if illinois has a turnover in the ball game they have well, really handled the defensive pressure. Weisinger wide open. He has 19. Does he miss a shot? Don't believe he has. Maybe one that I can recall off the top. Well, they had Gamble that, or Horton that time in the post up. All right, on a beautiful feet down low to Horton. And it's got a foul inside. No three second violation. Boy, I'll tell you what, I, I've heard so much about Campbell's unselfishness and his, and his passing ability. Uh, that was outstanding right there. Unfortunate to get the three-second violation. I give a snake a break and into the lineup, Jens Kuyava. The inbound to Weisinger again, they break it across. Well, you're right, I mean, I don't think Illinois has committed a turnover yet in the first half of play. A very low number if they've committed any. 
But it's amazing when you consider how much Iowa has pressed in this first half play. That's incredible. Now, they, they made the right decision every single time against the defensive pressure in terms of whether to take it in and score or set it back up in their half court off. Under two minutes left to go in the first half of play. 15-point lead for the Atlanta. They have the ball. That's Guyava, the big kid way outside, trying to feed it to him. He can't handle it. But through his hands, and Iowa will take over. There's the turnover story. Just two turnovers for Illinois. They've come within the last three or four minutes. Coach Henson using the last couple minutes here to give Norman and Hamilton a little bit of a breather. I'm sure he's hoping that he doesn't lose much ground. Low House with a good fake over Coons. Brad Lowhouse now with 15 first half points. I wouldn't be surprised to see Illinois try to run off as much of that 45-second shot clock with every possession now. They don't need to play basketball right now. They just want to get their people some rest. Offenberger. Lawrence right there for the rebound. Hawkeyes with an important possession. Armstrong, and he's got the rim. Oh, Brown Loring, they wanted an offensive basket interference call. No call made. Hawkeyes are back to within 11. And again, that's a, that's a big swing right there. Altenberger misses the three-pointer, and they get two. Altenberger from deep and a three-point shot. He has three from the field, all from three-point range. I think that was a reasonably big basket. That gives him a 14-point lead. He misses that. They have a chance to cut it to less than 10 before the half ended. Roy Marble is mugged down low, and... No foul called, but it'll belong to Iowa out of bounds. I believe Altenberger, I'm not even certain how he ended up with the ball. But I think he, he got it back. Yeah, I thought it was really, running out of bounds. It looked like Kuyava might have committed a foul with the body on the play inside either Kuyava or Phil Coons. Phil Coons is seeing a lot of action here tonight. Caught the flu around Christmas time and was slow for a long time. He had a real bad. He was just starting to come into his own in the early season, and that kind of retarded his growth this season, as far as basketball is concerned, I mean. I would take Tony Weisner out of the ball game right now. And if there's a foul or play stops, he could end up he could end up getting an extra two minutes rest here before the halftime. Guyava picks up his third personal foul. Jens Kuyava looked like more of a foul of circumstance than anything else. Heading to the free throw line, Brad Lowhouse. Watch this. Now, I'm not real certain. I, yeah, you're right. I mean, he just he, he was just accidentally there. there. But again, you cannot. A player jumps in the air like that. You have to give them the right to come down to the floor. Lowhouse off the mark on the free throw. Here come the fighting Illini. 16 seconds to go, no shot clock. Illinois leading by 14. Be a big basket, Steve. 16 point lead. It's going to be some kind of tough to overcome. Altenberger. Oh! point lead. A three point shot. The Illini executed about as well as you can, and they've got a big lead. The end of the first half, they lead. We'll be back with half that activities after this. Second half action after this. Did you maybe? Wayne Larrabee and Steve Grody, Assembly Hall in Champaign, Illinois. And Steve, you and I will never be mistaken as rocket scientists, but the three-point field goal in this first half told the story, at least as far as the spread is concerned. Illinois, seven three-point field goals. Iowa had just one. What does that translate into? 18-point difference, and the spread is uh, 17 right now. There's the other game uh, going out of the Big Ten Conference. Purdue leading Minnesota that at was, halftime. That was 25 to 20 at one time. Sure was. There's the three-point stat for you right there. Illinois basketball as we start the second half of play. Just amazing the subtle impact that that three-point shot has had on the game, you know? 
A little more than subtle. Yeah, I got a pity. Yeah, you're right. Probably a poor term for it. <laughs> Sometimes subtle. It's a big thing today. Again, uh, coming into the second half, now Iowa's got to stop that three-point field goal from the perimeter. They've got to get some points off of their defensive pressure. Iowa seems to be extending the defense a little bit now. Altenberger, Marble picks him up. In the corner, Blackwell gets it back for the fighting Illini. Weisinger outside. Armstrong on. Again, Blackwell, who comes up short. Here comes Roy Marble with it. Orton into the corner. Well, that time they had a little bit of a fast break opportunity. I thought that was a poor pass right there. Unable to get a good shot at him. Orton trying to feed it inside. Lohas not expecting the pass, and it's taken away by Altenberger in Illinois. And I believe that's the second occasion where Horton's had difficulty in completing the lob pass from the wing into the lane area. Weisinger backs off on the dribble, sets it up for Illinois. Gamble right with Weisinger. Altenberger now out of three-point territory. Here's Hamilton who pops open. Marble up high for the rebound. Iowa's held the edge on the board, especially on the offensive side. Lowhouse, three-point shot. Hamilton trying to keep it alive, and the Illini break out of there. The snake, Kenny Norman, Tony Weisinger pulling up. This kid will not make a mistake tonight. I guarantee you, he won't make a mistake. B.J. Armstrong gets it across in a hurry, and Armstrong frees up. Lohaus oh, gets it Lohaus. back on the tap, and his turnaround won't go, but he's fouled by Hamilton. Hamilton picks up his third. That's the first in Illinois in the second half. Just an initial observation. Wayne, I don't know if you see the same thing. It doesn't look to me like Iowa is running at the same uh, tempo that they did during the first half. They look to be a little bit tired right now. Oftentimes, though, when you come out of the locker room for the second half, it'll take a couple minutes to get loose again. Tony Weisinger now at a career high 21 points. Kuyava reports on replacing Hamilton. Three personals on Hamilton, as I mentioned. He has a seat on the bench next to Lou Henson. Lowhouse at the free throw line. Makes good on his first. He's got another. Lowhouse, high point man for Iowa now with 18 points in the game. Could be another two points off an offensive rebound. To some extent, that kept them in the ball game, if you will. Uh, even if, if you're in the ball game, it's down 17. There was offensive rebounds. Count them 10 in the first half for Iowa. Weisinger pressured in the backcourt, and it's last touched by the Hawkeyes' Lohaus. First time Iowa even came close to a turnover situation from that pressure. Blackwell breaks it across. Armstrong broke up the fast break pass to Weisinger, and Illinois will have to set it up. There's Lou Henson and Doug Altenberger. What a job Henson's done here. Has his team 12 and 2. Tom Davis with the Hawkeyes at 15 and 0, undefeated and ranked second in the nation. But they're up against it here tonight. Well, if you want a winning program, all you have to do is take a look at Lou Henson. If you play great defense, you're going to win basketball games, and that's what his team does year after year. Blackwell looking for room on the penetration. We've got a foul before the shot. B.J. Armstrong guilty of his second personal. That's the first on the team. So the team fouls even to the early going here. Glenn Blackwell, no points thus far. And he came out firing in the first two Big Ten games last week at 24 and 28 points. Again, and I mentioned this in the Northwestern game, what I respect him for, though, is he has not forced his offense. If it doesn't come to him, it just doesn't come to him. for the first time. Well, I think you have to send a message that, hey, big fella, I'm in here to play defense, but, uh, again, not a good play. Good feed. Horton to Marble down low. Roy Marble now has four points. It's another quiet key to Iowa's deficit is Roy Marble being held off the scoreboard the way he has in this game. Got a foul out of the midcourt strike. I think they're going to call it on Jeff Moe. Uh, I'm not sure. Moe or Marble. Let's watch it. It's been an extremely well-officiated game. Oh, boy, that is a little close. Moe 
Moe picks up his first. That is the second on the team. And no question that Moe pushed him. Ticky tacky, you saying? Well, I'm not so sure it's consistent with what well, Holly called it tonight. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of banging going on. It's been a, a tremendously well officiated game. I always tell everybody that officials and announcers are the same. When the game's over, if you don't remember them, they did a good job. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Inside Norman on the turnaround. Tuyaba keeping it alive. Weisinger is wide open. Yes. Three-point shot by Weisinger. Here comes Jeff Moe in transition. He pulls up short. Illini on the run, and Kenny Norman will set it up. Tony Weisinger. by 20. That is the largest lead of the evening. Arnberger dealing baseline. That was a great pass by Weisinger. Glenn Blackwell. Weisinger out high. Altenberger, three-point shot. Kuyava has the rebound. Blackwell took it away from him. <laughs> Kuyava gets it inside. Blackwell said a sorry, big fella. Here you go. Yeah, don't worry. Just get back in position. I'll get it back to you. 22-point lead for Illinois. Armstrong quiets the crowd. B.J. Armstrong now with six points. We will find out what Iowa is really made of. They're playing, against, they're playing at Illinois against a team that has made... Virtually no mistakes all night long. Norman dealing baseline gets a shove from Ed Horton, the third on Horton. That is the third of the team of the second half. Second chance points this half. Five for Illinois, none for Iowa. Timeout called with 15.34 left to go. Illinois firmly in command, leading by 20. We'll be back with more. The Big Ten Television Network. Down low. Watch Blackwell, number 21, takes it away from his own man, Kuyaba, then realizes his mistake. There you go, big guy. All right. I'll tell you what, Illinois is certainly extremely impressive uh, in this ball game. I think from a consistent, consistency standpoint, Kuyaba, to me, is the key player for this ball club. If he can come in, for instance, I saw them their Pittsburgh game where he just played you know, the game of his career. When he plays very well, he gives them that added dimension in the middle they don't have right now. Fighting Illini on the attack, and Weisinger trying to go inside of Kuyava, knocked away, and then taken away by Weisinger. Blackwell to Kuyava. Oh, and he missed the slam! Foul coming up on Lorenzen of Iowa. Even when it goes wrong for Illinois, it goes right. <laughs> exactly. It is that kind of night, uh, at least with 15 minutes and 24 seconds to play, it's been that type of night. Illini will set up underneath their own bucket. Altenberger triggering on the inbound to Weisinger. Blackwell. Moe on the rebound, a pie for Iowa. This is Billy Jones. Well, Iowa needs to find a hot hand. Lorenzen from deep. Lorenzen connecting out a second for the field. He's got four. You know, I, I hate to see players struggle. I mean, I'm just very happy for Lorenzen. I know he's had a difficult time this year. Maybe putting a little too much pressure on himself. If he just relaxes, he's got a lot of talent. He'll be a good player. Weisinger retrieves. Jeff Moe had knocked it away. This is Glenn Blackwell, number 21. Plenty of time left on the shot clock. Iowa really pounding defense right now, Steve. We're seeing much more aggressive defense by Iowa. Inside, Kuyaba over Gary Wright. And the rebound ripped away by Jones. Billy Jones in transition. Good move. Dishing off, and we've got a blocking foul coming up on Altenberger. That's another great call. First on Altenberger, second on the team in the half. I'll tell you what, if they don't make the foul call, this could end up being a great, great play if he makes the basket, because that is a great pass. Look at that. 
Good call. Altenberger just a little bit late getting there. Lorenzen triggering at the Hawkeye baseline. I believe he wanted to hit Marble. Right retrieves on the hook. He comes up short. Lorenzen to right on the rebound. Right has his pocket picked by Weisinger. And now a foul is called out of frustration, perhaps. Gary Wright, the guilty party, I believe. What you're going to see here is Gary Wright's injury to his hand preventing him from coming up with this ball. Watch. He's got it in his hand, yep. but look, he doesn't grab it real hard. He will not put, put pressure on that left hand. He can still run. He can still jump. The problem is he can't handle the ball, according to Tom Davis, anywhere near where they'd like him to be. Exactly. Broke three bones and dislocated a couple of knuckles in that hand. Oh, Illinois textbook in breaking the press once again. I'll tell you what, every team around the league is going to go to school on this game. Yeah, I they want this game filmed. Yes, sir. <laughs> they, the VCRs are working overtime tonight. They want this game filmed. Altenberger to Norman inside. Guyava the rebound. Norman kept it alive. He won. watching that's called staying with it never giving up marble almost made a couple mistakes stayed with it got the basket good no call on the uh, the fake uh, charge inside also 13 23 left to go see down low to norman is batted away broken up by the hawk guys and here, jones comes out of there here comes the iowa run illinois getting a little lackadaisical now blackwell tipped it away Altenberger keeping it alive mo comes away on the scoop look at that and it counts. This is what Iowa can do to you when you when you let up for one second. Great hands by Blackwell there. I think the official got blocked out right there. I don't know if he'd have called a foul anyway. Mo in the right place at the right time. Ten is guilty of the foul. Number ten for the fighting Illini, and that is Tony Weisinger, but it's only his first personal foul and the third team. Lou Henson and company going to talk things over. 13.08 left to go. The Hawkeyes may be starting a run. The second ranked team in the nation still trailing by 14. Big Ten basketball continues after these messages. For this time we're going to run a play for you show you how to, to break that full court pressure. Certainly the entry pass is the most important. Really, Iowa makes a little bit of a mistake right here, and Illinois uh, uses the opportunity. Anytime you get the ball uh, in a position where you've got three defenders around you, you want to get rid of it right away. And obviously, as soon as they break the pressure, they want to look for Tony Weissinger. Jeff Moe at the line looking for a three-point play. Iowa trailing by 14. on the free throw, rebound right. Gary Wright down low. Again, the full court pressure. Again, the Illini break it across. Blackwell trying to feed off to Hamilton, knocked away, but Blackwell gets it back. Uh-oh. Weisinger couldn't handle it. Jeff Moe. On a collision, is called for the foul. Moe and Weisinger hit flush. This is the only thing that, that tends to happen to some players in this type of a system. Mo right here is just going a little bit too far out of control. He got the basketball. I don't think he really had a good idea where his teammates were. He started down the floor with, with really no purpose in mind and in charge. Second personal foul on Mo, sixth on the team, and that may be crucial here. There's a team foul situation here in the second half. The inbounds north. Gamble from deep. Gary Wright the rebound with the bad hand off the glass. This Gary kid. Wright beginning to assert himself here. Weisinger trying to chase down. Gamble knocks it away. And Gamble is called for the foul, I believe. That's a very good call. It was unfortunate. I know as an official, you hate to make a, a, a foul call when two players are really hustling after the ball. So Weisinger ahead position. 
and I believe it was Gamble. Gamble came over the shoulder, yep. Came over his shoulder. That is 17 fouls already, Steve. We've still got 12.30 left to go in the game. Iowa's over the limit. That's, yes. a, that's a big hindrance to their comeback attempt. Yes, but, but you can't help from notice, though, what all this defense, how the defensive pressure now has completely changed the complexion of this ballgame. But you are right. Uh, you know, the foul situations, the remaining 12 minutes and 30 seconds, uh, will be something that we watch. Tony Y, nine assists in addition to 24 points, four three-pointers. And he misses on the free throw. Lohaus had the rebound corralled for a moment and then it's picked up off the floor by Jones. See, the point guard is always very important in, in Tom Davis's offensive concept because he has to decide when things are running a little too much out of control, when to settle it down, and when to push it. Iowa turnover, fighting a line, I get it back. Gamble playing tight on Bardo. Here comes Weisinger. Kenny Norman one on one goes to the hook. Horton cleared out. <laughs> Illinois back on top by a comfortable margin now. You made a good point. Gamble has been uh, tremendously quiet in this offense for Iowa. I think I'd like to see him when he gets the ball be a little more aggressive and try to create some things. Here he goes. And Bardo guilty of the foul out front. Steve Bardo picks up his third. That is the fourth on the team. There's Tom Davis. It's been a tough night for the Hawkeyes here. I might just mention, I really feel like Lou Henson does as good a job in the strategy of calling timeouts as any coach in the country. He never waits until the momentum completely changes. He called a timeout here. This last one was not a TV timeout. He called a timeout, made some corrections, and uh, obviously that broke the press. Whatever he said on the sidelines from Morton. Well, I, and I really want this game for more reasons than just the undefeated conference season of the early going. Hawkeyes pinned a loss on them the first in 31 games here a year ago. We've got a foul inside coming up on Bardo. Bardo picks it up. His fourth, fifth on the team. Still a non-shooting affair, but again, four personal fouls on Bardo. Up off the bench, Glenn Blackwell comes back on. Talk about people have been quiet. Glenn Blackwell has not scored in this ballgame. We mentioned that earlier tonight also. He was so much in evidence in the first two games of the season in the Big Ten season. He does. Blackwell does have eight assists, so he's still contributing. Marble out high. Jones works the perimeter to Horton. This camera angle will give you a great idea of how this Iowa offense moves and forces the defense to expend so much energy. Good ball movement, and Horton frees up inside his first field goal. He's got five points in the game. The other thing that all that movement does, as you saw right there, is it takes away defensive help. Occasionally, if, you, if your defensive philosophy is to front the post, occasionally you're going to get caught like that where the defensive help uh, is taken away. Again, they break the press with ease, and Blackwell on the turn. Horton had the rebound, lost the handle on it. Marble finally picks up for Iowa. Marble double-teamed, Altenberger takes it away, and Marble reaches around. Again. First personal on Marble. And again, another situation where... Marble is heading down the floor out of control. He's going to grab the ball. I think he walks a little bit right there. Now, look, he has no idea where the defense is. Dribbles right into a trap. Fifth steal of the game for Altenberger. You know, it's also a real good play by Altenberger because you know, he cuts off the, uh, the penetration down the floor. And in a heated battle for the ball like that, that was somewhat of an aggressive foul by Marble. You can tend to lose your head a little bit in a big ball game like this, but he kept his cool. Doug Altenberger, the 6'4 senior from Peoria, Illinois. Misses on the free throw. Too close to the basket for him. Well, they missed the last two free throws. That's usually an indication the players are beginning to get a little bit tired. Yeah, I mean, Altenberger likes it out there about 22, 23 feet, doesn't he? Yeah, he, should, he should back he up. He should back up on the free throws, right? <laughs> Take it from the top of the circle. Can you do that? Yes. <laughs> Martin loses a handle out of play. That's a good question. You shouldn't have brought that up. I'm supposed to know. <laughs> 
Full court pressure now. The Illini have faced it many times here tonight, and many times they have broken it with ease. And again, they do it in textbook fashion. Weisinger, the penetration for two. You said it. He is having the game of his career. He will not make a mistake all night. Gamble on the drive to the hoop, and it won't go. Altenberger had the rebound, and I believe he might have run out of real estate. Stepped on the baseline in the pile up down low. Hey, well, we get another angle. Okay, this is a good angle on this. Well, and you're going to see when this play is over. Marble knocks the ball out of Altenberger's hands. Watch this. Again, Altenberger keeps his cool back. On the drive, it's Ed Horton as we come right back live. And Horton connects. He's fouled on the play. Horton now has four second half points. He'll head to the free throw line looking for what for Iowa is a crucial three-point play. I'll tell you, there's, if I was a coach, what would always drive me crazy is if my, I did not get the defensive rebound on a missed free throw and giving up a layup off an inbounds play. Those are things that should never happen. The foul is on Kenny Norman. It is his third and the sixth on the team. Ed Horton is a free throw strike. Horton was a forward, as I mentioned last year. He's moved into the center position, playing well in conference plays, averaging 12 points in three conference games coming into tonight's action. Can't get the roll off the rim. Well, Horton has been a very much a quiet leader this year. For <laughs> Tony Y once again, he's got 28 points. Armstrong right back for Iowa. Jeff Moe. Kenny Norman up high for the rebound. Illini leading by 14. We're almost halfway through the second half. They have simply got to find a way to stop Tony Wall. Weisinger's 12 to 13 from the field now. Weisinger spilled by Lohaus. Personal foul number one on Brad Lohaus. This is a good cross-body block. Well, I, I can tell you that Weisinger is beginning to get a little bit tired. You see the quick hands of Lohaus right there. Aggressive move for the ball. But you saw that time he could not penetrate across the midcourt strike with the left hand. Anytime you get tired, you start losing that dexterity. You miss free throws. You have a little bit more trouble handling the basketball. Right now, he is beginning to get a little tired. Weisinger in the second half, one three-point shot. He's 0 for 1 from the free throw line here tonight. And as we mentioned a moment ago, 12 of 13 from the field. Tony Y, 9.56 left to go. The game is Illinois leading it 69 to 55 over second ranked Iowa. I'll tell you what I don't like about Weisinger. The guy, I don't think he's got a rebound all night, does he? I mean, this guy, he's a, he's a two-dimensional player. Come on, he's 5'10". <laughs> How many, well, you were a pretty good rebounder for a guard, weren't you, if I remember right, in yeah. Michigan? I'll tell you, the guy just can't read yeah. down there. He just can't. Yeah, I mean, really, can't play in your team, right? Uh. <laughs> what a night for the senior from Central High School of Peoria, Illinois. One out of two at the line. Lorenzen on the rebound. Armstrong pushes it across in a hurry. Weisinger guilty of a reaching in foul as he slapped at the ball. Quick, make that kill on the foul. Again, no kill guilty on the call. And again, um, Hanson makes a great move here. He recognizes that Weisinger is getting a little bit tired. He takes him out and gives him a rest. Gill picks up his first personal. The team is over the limit, so both sides are in the bonus situation. And Armstrong's at the line for Iowa. A.J. Armstrong from Brother Rice High School in Detroit, Michigan. Strong making good on his first, he'll have another. He averages 12.5 points a game, shooting at 74% from the free throw strike, 50% from the field. Good penetrator. Well, he this year, and I think really, you have to go back to the North Carolina State in the last shootout. He made two free throws to put that game in overtime, and I really feel like that was a big confidence booster for him. He has made the transition from a point guard to a playmaker. And the difference to me is the point guard, he dribbles the ball down the floor and passes it to the wing. The playmaker penetrates, controls tempo, and makes things happen. We've got two of the best in the league right here at Armstrong. And, and Weisinger, I think, has to be the top one right now off this performance. All Dr. Tom Davis could do is shake his head. The reaching in foul on Jeff Moe is his third personal. There's Lou Henson, whose team has executed very well overall here tonight. At the free throw line, Steve Bardo. Bardo, young freshman from Carbondale, Illinois. Next good on the first 
free throw. He'll have another. Pardo now with three points. 14-point lead for Illinois. He can make it 15 right here with 9.45 left to go. Pair of free throws at the line by Pardo. They've got a problem with the net down here. Yep, you're right. And it's been that way for a while. It's out of... Well, one of the loops is out of the, uh, the rim, as you can see, on the front portion there. The netting of the basket, they'll kind of been like that for the better part of the second half. They should check our final angles. What are those things called? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Coming up, Minnesota, taking on the eighth-ranked Fighting Illini of Illinois. You'll see that game on many of these Big Ten stations, 3 o'clock Saturday afternoon. Yeah, what do they call that? It's a loop, right? I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure there's a loop up there. Uh, uh, a lot of, yeah, oh, that's right. The loop is in Chicago, I'm told, from the truck. I should know that. I live there. I know that guy. i got to go there tomorrow. Here comes Jones. Iowa on the attack. Trailing by 15. Gary Wright. Away from the ball. Contact made. Altenberger guilty of the foul and doesn't know why. Well, the whistles are beginning to blow a little bit more now. Um, They're I don't getting know. a little tighter, you're right, than they were earlier in the game. Especially away from the ball. Well, play, uh, I think the roughness and intensity of play... Uh, has picked up from a contact standpoint. I think the first half, maybe the pace was a little bit quicker, but now as players get a little bit more, a little tireder, the contact is a little more aggressive. Roy Marble with five second half points, only seven points in the game. He averages 15.7 points a contest overall. Two out of two at the line for Roy Marble. Full court pressure by Iowa. Bardo to break it across for Illinois. I think what Iowa has to do, the mistake they're making on this press is when they throw it into the big guy, the wing defender is trying to double-team the initial pass. They're beating him down the sideline. The wing defender has got to guard that guy down the floor. Lorenzen the rebound on the miss by Altenberger. This is Jones. Marble nearly had it taken away by Kendall Gill. Clears to Jeff Moe. Now the Hawkeyes go into their setup offense. They do a lot of movement, don't they, Steve? They try to weave quite a bit, moving people in and out of the pivot position down there. Gary Wright trying to force the pass, and the kick is called. You know, you'll see right down low, then you see him outside, and they do the same thing with Lohoff. They did the same thing with Ed Horton. They don't play a regular low post type offense. Yeah, it's a good observation. What that does, and we've talked about this a little bit, it tires the defense out, particularly the big guys who have to play wing defense. They have to play the top of the key. They have to fight for position down low. It takes away defensive help. It'll, it'll uh, create some layup situations. And it's one of the big reasons why they can hit the offensive board uh, because the big guys end up being out of position. Bardo looking for help and finds it in Kenny Norman. Now Bardo out of the point. 8.25 left to go in the game. And Illinois leading it by 13. Down low, Norman on the turn. Gary Wright, the rebound. Here comes Jones. Iowa still has an opportunity to make a run, but they better start soon. I would I would look for a... In fact, now it's going to look like I looked up, but uh, Armstrong's got to get back in the ball game. I think he's the one that creates tempo for this team. Jeff Moe on a three-point bucket, and that gets Iowa right back in it. Down by 10. It's a big basket for Mo, but I, I really believe they need Armstrong in. He's the one that pushes the ball down the floor most effectively. Armstrong is back in the lineup for Iowa. Full court pressure, and per usual, the inbounds, Kuyava. Bardo gets it into the hands of Weisinger. Now you see it. Turns the trap. Lohaus guilty of the foul. Lohaus helping out of the double team, his second personal foul. One and one opportunity at the line for Tony Weisinger. The 29 points by Weisinger ties the team high watermark this season for an individual player. Who is that statistician over there? My goodness. I'll tell you what, she's the sharpest I've seen. Tony Y at the free throw line. Hey, the truck's not doing bad either. They have the same note we did. <laughs> I think they're getting it from the same source. Weisinger. 
missed his last free throw, connects on this one. I the lead you. is 11. I mentioned this in the Northwestern Illinois game. It's been a while since I've done Big Ten league games. I've forgotten how physical this league is. Watch. Even after the, the free throw, Weisinger is going to get pumped uh, by Armstrong, keeping him off the board. Two out of two, flying for Tony Wise. 7.55 left to go in the game. Fighting a line leading the Iowa Hawkeyes by 12. You're watching Big Ten Basketball on the Big Ten Television Network. The shooting percentage for Iowa is getting a little bit better. It was down around 41% earlier. It's up to 47%, but this team normally shoots very well from the field at 51.6. Well, it's a function of a couple things. Uh, the defensive pressure is beginning to take a little bit of its toll. Uh, additionally, the offensive pattern has created some layup situations. The line eye back on the floor. There is the Iowa huddle. Illinois on top and in command of the moment. <laughs> Wayne Larrabee and Steve Grody at the Assembly Hall in Champaign, Illinois. The Iowa Hawkeyes second ranked in the nation on the downside of the scoreboard at the moment. These are the Hawkeyes with the dark uniforms on the attack. And Illinois into a 2-3 zone lane, the first time in the ballgame. Armstrong from deep. Lowhouse had the rebound for a moment. It was tipped away, and Cody Y cleans up for the fighting Illini. Weisinger. Picked up by Gamble. He's had an outstanding night as Tony Weisinger. 29 points so far in the ballgame. We still have 7.24 left to go. This is Doug Altenberg. Good feed for Yaba. Nice take and low house back outside Altenberg. Good decision making right there by the big guy inside. Norman the snake on the turn. Barton cleans up on the board. Lost the handle but did not dribble. Now here come the Hawkeyes. Armstrong fires and connects. And I'll tell you what, Armstrong, that's the third occasion where he's just brought the ball down the floor, made a good move, pulled up and hit a big jump shot. The lead has shrunk to 10 points now for the fighting line out. They led by 17 of the half. I've been very impressed in the second half on the couple occasions when I was tried to make a run. Illinois has come up with a couple big baskets and, and stopped the charge. Hawkeyes can cut it to eight. This is Horton. They tie up Marble on the rebound. Kuyava and Marble. Jump ball indication. And on the alternating possession, it'll belong to Iowa. So often you see in a ball game when a team that has the big double-digit lead, if they are unable to put the opponent away in the second half, they are susceptible to a change of momentum. I feel like Illinois, uh, just like they were when we did them against Saturday, Northwestern yeah. Saturday, is in that same position. They're getting a little tired. The defensive pressure has be, uh, begun to take its toll. Uh, I think they are in somewhat of a susceptible position right now. Iowa trailing by 10. Six and a half minutes left to go in the game. You're watching the Hawkeyes on offense. I think the other point needs to be made is uh, when you have been trailing the entire ball game, you like to take the lead with just a couple minutes left in the, in the game. That way you don't have to sustain that effort over a long period of time. You can rely the momentum uh, through the end of the ball game. Altenberger thought he had it for Illinois. Iowa basketball. The other thing we're seeing here is the Fighting Illini playing more zone in the second half as it wears on. Is that a result of foul difficulties or is that a result of getting tired and playing that man-to-man -man defense that you, you just can't play it as well? Lou Henson told me that they would play strictly man-to-man -man in this ball game. I think that they're a little bit tired. That's why they've gone to the zone. Foul, a blocking foul on Altenberger. And Horton will head to the line. And we're going to get another look at this one. Again, Marble has not been that active offensively in this game. We mentioned earlier, I felt like he had to put the ball on the floor, be a little more creative, uh, score some points for his ball club. That's always a, a difficult call on the side like that. And Horton shooting at 52% from the free throw stripe, a two shot foul. Though to nine, and Tom Davis watching on the Iowa bench. Second by Ed Horton. 
second point ball game, and Kendall Gill breaks it across for the Illini. Kenny Norman sets up the offense to Weisinger. Again, you saw the Illini break the full court pressure, but no need to go to the hoop, Steve, because they, they can afford to work some time off the clock here. Well, the other thing is, is the quicker they shoot the ball, the more time they spend on defense. You, know, you can rest a little bit on offense, you know, take 40 seconds, relax a little bit, run some time. You, know, you control this game right now with a nine-point lead, five minutes, 30 seconds to play. And they are taking some time here. Ten to go on the shot clock for Illinois. Now Weisinger starts up the offense. Altenberger guarded by Marble. Inside Kenny Norman. The snake double team. Hammers it home off the glass. Six second half points for Kenny Norman. The lead 11 now for Illinois. Mo puts up a wild shot. I don't believe it. Boy, I'll tell you what. You know, he... He missed the pass. They had Horton posted up low, wide open. Uh, takes a difficult shot, maybe a poor decision, but difficult it worked out for him. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's an understatement. Here is Norman. Back outside of Weisinger. Again, they'll try to work the clock. Just under five minutes to go in the game. And I'll tell you, they're going to their bread and butter right now when the going gets tough. 19 points for Kenny Norman. Eight in the second half. Armstrong on the drive. We got a foul before the shot. Foul coming up before the shot by B.J. Armstrong. Armstrong beginning to play more of a role. Kendall Gill picks up the free the uh, foul. His second. Watch it again. There's the uh, there's the shot by Jeff Mo. Can you believe that? I don't even think he saw the rim. He just threw it up in the general direction of section C44 that found the hoop. Well, Mo's a great spark plug off the bench, and I think you need a player. Every team needs a player like that, a guy that's real hard-nosed uh, and plays with reckless abandon. Now, I think that Jeff will play better if he learns to not play out of control. Uh, so DJ Armstrong, 74% free throw shooter, as I mentioned a moment ago. They can't afford to miss at the line. Armstrong is 3 of 3 of the charity spread. There's Lou Olson, anxious moments as his team now has its lead sliced down to 10. Lou Henson, I said Olson, isn't it? Thinking of uh, Lou Olson from the Iowa days. Well, Lou Henson can't be happy with this last offensive possession for Iowa. He's playing zone defense. They made a basket, and Armstrong was still able to get the inbounds pass, drive it down the floor, and take it close to the basket. That should, you know, that should not happen against the zone defense. There's the other game story there at Purdue, Michigan, or rather Minnesota training Purdue. Gene Katie's got an excellent club. Weisinger breaks it across. And the shot blocked by Gary Wright. Hawkeyes chance to come right back in and out. Inside on the turn, Marble. Gary Wright gets it back. Foul down low and Jens Kuyab, I believe. I'll tell you what. Iowa comes after you on the offensive boards and like I've never seen a team. This is a great, great move by Marble. That move creates uh, a defensive situation where they need some help. And that's just a tough call right there. They call it on Kuyaba, said he bumped him. It's either going to be a foul or a traveling situation. Gary Wright connecting on his first. He'll have another. Senior from San Bernardino, California. Transfer from USC. Makes a pair at the line. The Hawkeyes are doing what they have to do to get back into the game. They trail now by seven. 4.23 to go. Plenty of time. Inbound. by Marble. This is low. It's going to be on Altenberger. Yes, it is, with the body, I believe. And it's going to be a good call. In fact, it's, you know, you got to remember that these are also tough games for officials. First of all, this is just a, you know, a bad decision on the pass. The result of being tired. Now, this is a critical non-call. Watch. Good head fake, no travel. He got the ball on the floor uh, before he pulled up the pivot foot. Good no call on the travel, good call on the foul. 418 left to be played, and the Fighting Illini talk things over. Will that bore Big Ten basketball after these local messages. 
This telecast have been selected by Rasmussen Communications Management and approved by the Big Ten Conference. That's the story here at Assembly Hall in Champaign, Illinois. The Iowa Hawkeyes making a spirited comeback. They had trailed by as many as 20 points earlier in the second half. I believe, Steve, if I'm not missing my guess, it was, what, about a 22-point lead at one time for Illinois, or almost a 22-point lead. The great teams never give up, and this Iowa team under Tom Davis will never give up. One of the things you always notice about the great teams, they are always able to outscore their opponents at the free throw line. Coming into this ball game, Iowa had shot almost 150 more free throw attempts and outscored their opponents by over 100 free throw line. With that conversion right there, Iowa has now outscored Illinois 18-6, make it 19-6 at the free throw line. And as a result, they have crept back to within five points of the fighting Illini. The Hawkeyes on the comeback trail. Blackwell leads, and Steve Bardo reports back on for Illinois. Altenberger triggering on the inbounds. Weisinger picked up by Roy Marble. A surprise there? No. they got to put a 6-7 guy on, on him. That's all they've got in the lineup. Altenberger, Bardo back to Weisinger. A little bit different defensive pressure off the uh, timeout. Man-to-man oh, man, man -man defense. Now they're in, in a man, and looks like they're going to trap off. Tony Wise salting away some time here. Just under four minutes left to go. Well, you don't want to foul now. You're making them work hard. Altenberger wide open. He doesn't miss from there very often. the feed. Here's Gamble. Gamble! Three-point ball game. What a comeback by Iowa. Bardo double-teamed. Weisinger comes up with the ball. He gives up his dribble a little early, but Bardo is there. That was a great play by Bardo. He got nudged a little bit and was falling out of bounds. Illinois is tired now. They're disorganized. They need a timeout. Bardo is fouled by Marble. And there was little doubt on that one. Tempers are flaring here. Again, these are the type of plays that you make when you get tired. You don't pick up your dribble number one. Then you need an offensive player to come to you. to go. They're going to be shooting free throws in a moment here is Marble on the drive. i tell you what. Left no doubt, didn't he? And that's what you like. You want your guys, when they're in close to the basket, you want them to go up strong and dump the ball if they can. If you get fouled, you're more likely to, to get the three-point play if you're taking it in strong like that. Tom Davis wants a timeout with Bardo heading to the free throw line. We're going to keep it right here. Steve Bardo will be at the line for Illinois when we resume. Personal foul number two on Roy Marble, and as we've been mentioning throughout much of the second half, both teams over the foul limit. I made the comment a few minutes into the second half when Iowa was down by more than 20 points that the undefeated coming into this ballgame, now we will find out what they're made of. And they certainly answered that question. They certainly did, regardless of what happens in the final 309. This team battled back from what, a 20 or 21 point deficit to get back into the ball game and close to within one. And remember, they're playing a top 10 team on the road. They're down 20 in the second half. They did not give up, and they're right back in it. Look at the foul situation now. Horton and Moe, three each for Iowa, but Altenberger, Bardo, and Kuyaba with four apiece. Altenberger, that's a key right there. He can win a ball game for you with one long shot. As you look down to the final 309, number one, the keys for Iowa in their comeback. Is it just that pressure, constant pressure wearing down Illinois in the second half? Yeah, I don't think they can take off the defensive pressure. That's what they do best. That's what's got them here. But I think that in the half-court situation, 
They've got Illinois tired. Their execution's been poor. I think if Illinois breaks the full court pressure, you have to make them make a positive move. You don't want to send them to the foul line now if they break the pressure. Offensively, you know, you just keep running your pattern. Steve Pardo at the free throw line for the fighting Illini. Pardo has made both of his free throw shots here tonight. He has four points in the game. For a Most versatile of the newcomers plays forward and guard. Average 15.4 points a game, 6.5 rebounds, and 4.5 steals last year, senior year in high school. One out of two at the line, Lowhouse has the rebound for the Hawkeyes. A field goal from two point range will tie it. This half, Illinois shooting 26%. And Illinois now back into a man to man defense. Strong. They work the perimeter now. Hawkeyes can afford to set up and wait for a good shot. They trail by two. And I think that the uh, adrenaline of the moment now has got both teams on their toes. No, everybody looks fresh. I don't think fatigue will be a factor in the last two and a half minutes. Jerry Wright. Harry Wright connected. Oh, oh, oh. What an unbelievable move. to go. Kenny Norman clears to Altenberger. Tony Weisinger will set up the offense. Again, now, Iowa doesn't want a foul. You have to make Illinois execute and get a good shot. I wouldn't, I was going to say, I wouldn't be surprised if Norman gets the ball. Take that. Ten second half points, 21 in the game for Kenny Norman. Hawkeyes trail by two. Way outside. I'd be surprised if you see a three-point shot by Iowa now. I think they're going to look to take it to the hoop. Mow in traffic down low on the fade. Oh, Sensational execution on both sides down the stretch. Kenny Norman to Altenberger, and he plays it ahead of Weisinger. the jump ball indication on the alternating possession. It'll belong to Illinois. Watch Mo. I'll tell you what, it's, it's effort and plays like that that make the difference. Mo hurt his hand. He's trying to get out of the ball game. Instead of just taking him out, they want an injury timeout. Mo pried it loose, but Weisinger lost the handle on it and just was able to get it back, and it was tied up in Illinois. And the alternating possession gets it back. Tom Davis wants the timeout you're talking about, Steve. He wants a new, he wants you know just a little break in the action. He's got an injury. You know he gets some time to to, to replace that player. He wants to confer now with the officials. You know, it's it's plays like that that are contagious. And when you get a player diving on the floor, giving it a 100 percent effort, everybody else does. Got a whistle off the inbound, foul on Roy Marble, away from the ball. Pushing foul on Marble. That is his third. You know, you have to adjust, you have to adjust to the officials' whistles. You know, they've been calling a little more of the contact. And you just have to, you know, you have to, uh, that's just a bad decision right there by Marble. Steve Pardo back to the free throw line. One and one opportunity for Pardo. Gamble on the rebound. Off the miss by Steve Pardo. And the Hawkeyes in a line eye will talk things over him with a minute 14 left to be played of the ball game. The fighting Illini have lost the 20 point late. Iowa right back in it has tied the game. Momentum has been on the side of the Hawkeyes since about the halfway point and in the second half. Well, and again, it's, I, I just see this so often. When you've got a team down in double digits and you do not put them away in the second half, you know, time after time after time, the team will come back on you. And that's, uh, it's just been a sustained, uh, hard-fought, hard-nosed effort by Iowa that's got them in a chance to take the lead now with a minute 14 seconds to play. Hawkeyes 
Buckeyes trailed by 17. The Illini have stayed afloat in a trouble final 10 minutes. Watch the play by the snake down low. Well, he's got 21 points now with that basket. 14 or 15 games this year, he's scored 20 points uh, or better. And that is a that was a big, big basket, needless to say. Second half shooting, 40.7% for Illinois, 55.2% for Iowa. Now watch this by Gary Wright, number three in black. With the bad hand, you see the bandage on that broken hand. You know, that would be better and better. He really is. He really is. And injuries are both physical and mental. And, uh, you know, once he gets over the mental part of that hand injury, uh, he'll be the player that uh, uh, he's shown. Hawkeye basketball. Brad Lohas on the inbounds. We're at Assembly Hall in Champaign, Illinois. Full court pressure now by Illinois. The Hawks look to take it across. DJ Thomas, number 10. B.J. Armstrong, I should say, You're thinking of the singer. Kevin Gamble, now they work it to right. And again, Iowa, over the last five minutes, has looked exclusively inside, either with a drive to the basket or players posting up inside. I would expect that's what we'll, they'll be looking for in this situation. Gary Wright looking to work the deal on Hamilton and lost it out of play. Crucial, crucial turnover with 43 seconds remaining in the score time. Count them now, 15 turnovers for Iowa, Illinois 8 in the ballgame. Points off turnovers, 16 for Illinois. Hard to believe only two for Iowa. Well, we've just seen so many contrasting statistics. You've got, you know, you've, you've got Iowa outscoring uh, Illinois by about uh, 14 points at the free throw line. You've got Illinois uh, with a wide advantage in the three-point field goal area. The spread there was 21 to three at halftime. Um, you can see the differential in the turnover. So we've seen a, a lot of momentum swings, and it's been the game that we had ho we hoped for. Hawkeyes have outscored the Illini by 17 points here in the second half. 17-point ball game at halftime in favor of Illinois. But the Illini are hanging on despite the abrupt shift of momentum here in the second half. Credit the Illinois defense at the last turnover. They got it to, to Gary Wright way out on the perimeter. The good defense uh, cut off any, any uh, pass to relieve pressure, forced him to put it on the floor. The resulting turnover. Two keys down the stretch as far as ball handling goes. Certainly Tony Weisinger, he's the guy you want to set up the play if you're Illinois. If you're Iowa, though, and you mentioned it before, B.J. Armstrong is a big key for Iowa, I would think, in this final uh, 43 seconds when they have the ball. The situation is, as it exists right now, Illinois, of course, does not have to shoot the ball. They've got 43 seconds on the time clock. Now, what that does, though, is it gives Iowa a chance to exert a lot of full court pressure and take some chances for the steal. Because you have to figure Illinois is not going to take it down and shoot it. You're going to break pressure, bring it back out and set up and take the last shot. Illinois is taking advantage of the three-point shot in this ball game. More so than Iowa. Altenberger on the crucial inbounds. And again, this is it's no sense to get the ball in under these circumstances. Foul coming up on Iowa's Kevin Gamble. It is his second personal foul. Is that on, against Blackwell? I mean, uh, Blackwell going. He, he's, he hasn't Blackwell scored yet. The free throw line, and he has not scored yet tonight. You're right. He has made 24 straight free throws. If you're Iowa, this is the man you absolutely can't afford to have at the free throw line. 24 straight free throws for Blackwell. Wheels turning at both ends. Kuyama coming into the lineup in place of Hamilton for Illinois. Horton back into the lineup replacing Gary Wright for Iowa. You know, I don't, as a partial observer, you, you hate to see any college player make a big turnover in a, in a big game like that. And you know, my heart goes out to Gary Wright. Blackwell misses the free throw. Still tied at 81. I don't think they'll call timeout now. I think they'll just run their offense. There's the time in the lower right-hand portion of your screen. Iowa on the attack. This is B.J. Armstrong. Gamble back to Armstrong. Well, 
Blackwell almost double team. I don't think you want to do that. No jump block now. Play straight up defense in this situation. Ten seconds to go. Down to seven seconds. Time winding down. Armstrong on the force. Off the glass. Altenberger fires at the length of the floor. Off the buzzer. We will go to overtime. The fighting Illini of Illinois and the Iowa Hawkeyes tied at 81. I'll tell you, over, it was meant to be overtime. Blackwell shooting at 92% of the free throw strike, having made 21 and 24 in a row. Misses a crucial one and one. So now five fresh minutes on the clock. And the score tied. And how does this alter your strategy now with an extra five minute period, Steve? No, I don't think you change a thing. I think uh, your Iowa, you, you, you keep the pressure on, you keep the pressure on, and uh, now you almost feel like Illinois is trying to hang on. Uh, they have to be dead tired. I know they came into the ball game thinking they would play the freshman a lot more. Uh, I don't know that they've played all that much. It'll be interesting to see the minutes that Weisinger's put in and Altenberger's put in. And, uh, but, you know, you made an interesting point. In the final two minutes and 30 seconds, no matter how tired you are, the adrenaline uh, that certainly flows in a game like this can kind of carry you over that tiredness, so to speak. Five minutes left to go. One more. you got to suck it up for another five minutes. Uh, does the... Uh, uh, I that think that they're coming to play again. Uh, not as much so. The last two minutes, 36 seconds, you saw. I mean, it looked like the players had just run out on the floor for, for the ball game. I, I think in, in a five-minute period like this, fatigue can be a little bit more uh, of a factor. Iowa now shooting almost 50%, 49.2. Illinois at 50%. The Illini have cooled off in the second half. The Hawkeyes shooting at 41% at one point earlier in this ball game have now come up in the second half with a hot hand. Well, and I think that's, again, in direct relation to uh, the, the Illini becoming a little bit tired on defense. They got their per shooting percentage up there by shooting easy shots. Really, the last six minutes, they've shot in very few shots from beyond the eight-foot range. There are the uh, game statistics. Turnovers, 15-8 Iowa. Leading in that dubious category, so to speak. Martin tipped it twice, and Gamble took it on the second tip. Armstrong sets it up for Iowa. Certainly the momentum still with the Iowa Hawkeyes. Gamble, Armstrong out front. Gamble in the corner. Ray Lohas way outside. He pulls Kenny Norman out. That's perhaps the significant point of Lohas being that far outside. I don't think Lohas will shoot the three-pointer from there like he did so often in the first half. But that's the point. It brings Kenny Norman out front of the basket. Roy Marble dealing uh, will it out. They no. say no. Ooh. One and one opportunity coming up for Roy Marble. I'll tell you what, the officials have been, the officials have had a, a lot of very difficult calls to make in this ball game. This is a big one. Glenn Blackwell, guilty of the foul. Oh, looks like Kenny Norman got him also. Well, Norman definitely got him. Obviously, the question is, was he in the act of shooting before the... Blackwell must have gotten him as he made the turn before he went up with the pump. That's the call. Marble makes good on his first. He's three out of three now at the charity strike. Doesn't miss that much from the free throw strike. Getting almost 70%. Missed on one out of two. The rebound slap to Horton and now foul. Foul wow. being indicated against the Illini once again on the loose rebound. And again the Hawkeyes on the offensive board cleaning up. This is, I think this is devastating. It's a real backbreaker. An offensive rebound from a missed free throw is, to me, as big a momentum uh, swinger as there is in the game. On top of that, you lose the heart and soul of your ball club to the fifth foul. Doug Altenberg, Berger leaves with the 12 points, all of which came in the first half of play. Fouls out with 4.24 and left to go in overtime. I'd also like to be able to find out when the last time Tony Weisinger scored. He has effectively been removed as an offensive threat. I want to say over the last uh, five, six five, minutes six, of the, six, the, the regulation time. Horton one out of two at the line. Hawkeyes now leading by a bucket. Tony Weisinger. Had an outstanding second half. Though in the later stages, 
was, was less a factor on offense as far as scoring is concerned. He handled the ball a lot against that press, no doubt about it. Again, I have to believe they look for uh, Norman in this situation. Hamilton outside. And Horton up in the air. White three. Three point. Oh! Believe me, Tony Weisinger now will not be tired the rest of the game. That will fire him and his ball club up. Low house inside of the double pop, and it won't go. Tapped out there for Gamble. Ball loose on the floor, off the grass, and the eye come away. Weisinger knocked it away. <laughs> Blocking foul, I believe, is going to be called on the Hawkeyes. Uh, or in the no, it's going to be an offensive foul. Couldn't tell on the official's call the way he was signaling it. It's funny how towards the end of the game, you can go back to the top of the show. They said they wanted to stop, dribble penetration by Weisinger, play health defense, and draw the charge. Second personal foul on Weisinger. Well, the Iowa defender made that happen. He just stood his ground and was right there to take the charge. D.J. Armstrong with a good defensive play. Armstrong, a chance to tie the game and then some. Illinois leading by a point. We're in overtime. All next. D.J. now has made five in a row from the free throw line, all of the second half. At four points at halftime. He's got nine points here in the second half and overtime period. Armstrong connects on a pair of the Hawkeyes at late as we see some with 326 to go in the extra session. Bardo looking on the inbound. Got to get it in in a hurry, and he does. Blackwell. The three-pointer by Weisinger has definitely been the equalizer in the overtime period. That has got his ball club inspired again. Hamilton wide open. A little too much touch on that. Flutter. Hawkeyes in transition. Armstrong playing the low house. Iowa's been on the comeback trail all night. Now they play on the lead by a point with three minutes straight up to go. Time left of the game. Paul takes the deflection and sets it up to Armstrong once again. And they got lucky right there. Foul away from the ball. I think it's going to be a three-second call. No, yeah, you're, no, it, no, you're right. It is a three-second call. No indication on the foul. They must have called three seconds. I was screened on the official who made the call. Horton just got lackadaisical. There was no defender keeping him inside. Horton is the man they called it on. Weisinger way outside. Hardo trying to feed Norman with a lazy pass, and Horton takes it away. By a point. Time left to the game, lower right portion of your screen. Marble travel. A line eye with a field goal can take the lead. Tom Davis on the Iowa bench. Weisinger. A little half court trap now. Blackwell in the lane. His first field goal, his first two points of the game, and what a time to get him. Illinois by one. Lowhouse handling the ball. <laughs> I thought Weisinger was going to sneak in behind. Yeah, he was going to pick, pick his pocket, yep. Armstrong. Oh, they had the line. Lowhouse throws it away. Blackwell on the drive, and a foul out front of Jeff Moe. Number four on Moe. They had the lob that time. Horton chose to throw a bounce pass. Great defensive help by Blackwell. Again, he has to score many points. Uh, up close to 10 assists. One big basket before. Critical free throw. Illinois leading by one. We have 139 left to go in overtime. Glenn Blackwell at the free throw line. And Blackwell, a 92% free throw shooter, as we mentioned toward the end of the regulation period. Missed the 
crucial free throw again. Armstrong signaled for a timeout, and the Hawkeyes will talk it over. 135 left to go in overtime. Timeout on the floor with the score. Illinois 86, Iowa 85. Brody, that's our story. Timeouts left. Illinois has two. Iowa out of timeouts. The Illini back on the floor with Blackwell, Hamilton, Pardo. Kenny Norman. Tony Weisinger, the fifth defender back on the floor for Illinois. It is Iowa basketball. Armstrong the backcourt with Kevin Gamble. Lohas marble the forwards. Horton the center. Horton takes the inbound. Gamble forced to work the ball, and he's fouled right away by Blackwell. That was second not person on Blackwell. Unnecessary foul. That was not in the game plan. No. <laughs> Who did plan. not diagram that? <laughs> and on the inbounds, you will foul here. No, that was not quite there. Illinois leading by a point. But Again. those things happen. Oh, yeah, and it's very difficult in a high-pressure game to fault aggressive defensive play. Gamble missing on the free throw. Blackwell up high for the rebound. This is Tony Weisinger. What a ball game this has been. Well, Illinois should get two possessions, Iowa one, if they run the clock correctly. Kenny Norman takes it right back outside, as you saw. Weisinger sets it up again. This is Bardo. Lowell Hamilton. Well, I'll tell you, I would have to, when, when Bardo and Hamilton get the ball, I would have to put a lot of defensive pressure on them. Bardo's a freshman. Hamilton been in foul trouble a lot this game. Not the greatest of ball handling. Weisinger had a block on the play by Gamble. Here comes Armstrong. Good speed on the play to oh, Marble for two. And I'll tell you, that's a great shot. A little off balance under defensive pressure. Less than a minute to go in Iowa, leading by a point on the drive. The six. Kenny Norman. This is Weisinger. Blackwell out on the wing. And Weisinger at the point. They've got timeouts left. Lohas picks it off. And he's fouled on the play. Illinois had timeouts left. I don't know if, if Coach Henson tried to call one and they didn't see it. But that's a possession to win the ball game. Or to save the ball game. On Kenny Norman is his fourth timeout taken by Lou Henson on the Illini bench and he's going to make Lowhouse think about these free throws seven seconds left to go Iowa leading by a point we'll be back after this from your local stations It's Steve Grody. Each team gets an additional timeout of the overtime session. Timeouts out one apiece. Illinois had two at the end of regulation remaining. Iowa was out of timeouts. And, of course, the Hawkeyes got their extra timeout in the overtime session. Well, I'll tell you what. Obviously, Illinois is not in the greatest of positions. But I would say that off a of free throw situation, that is the easiest time to get the ball down the floor quickly and get a good shot. Whether it's a, 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 a make or a miss. Iowa knows that, of course, and they're not going to put anybody on the, free, on the free throw area. Six out of seven at the line for Lohas here tonight. Iowa leads by two. Now they're going to try to get the ball to Weisinger. He'll drive it down the floor. They'll put a couple people in the corner for a three-point shot. Three-point lead for Iowa. Seven seconds to go. And again, the Hawkeyes this time relax the pressure. Blackwell signals for a timeout. Five seconds remaining. Final timeout taken by Lou Henson. 
Fighting Illini, 12 and 2 coming in. 4 and 0 in Big 8 play, ranked 8th of the AP poll, number 10 of the UPI. In Iowa, 15 and 0, 3 and 0 in Big 10 play coming in. Number 2 in the AP, number 3 in the UPI poll. And this game has lived up to building. Although for a while I was thinking, well, wait a minute. Because uh, Illinois had a comfortable 21 point lead in the second half. This adds a new wrinkle into the uh, coaching situation. How often do you have to design a play to get a, uh, a shot from the three point area? Now you've got a. There you take a look at that last turnover. And again, Tony Weisner's had a great ball game, but he has, you know. I think through fatigue, you know, made a couple of these turnovers down the stretch. But now you've got to design a play to get a 20-foot jump shot. You know, you talk about fatigue and the factor of being with Tony Weisinger. Almost all night, he has been the man they have gone to exclusively against that full-court pressure. He's got to be tired, no question about it. That's why his scoring pace slowed down midway through the second half. He's only human. He has had to because of the tempo of the game. He has had to play almost all the way. They've been able to spot him here and there, getting him on the bench for a little rest. But for the most part, he's had to go at it. Well, this is not a game for freshmen. <laughs> Well, they, they've obviously withstood the defensive pressure and the stamina uh, better than they did in the North Carolina game. They will not be involved in a, in a game as high tempo as this the rest of the year until they play Iowa. Iowa and Iowa City, <laughs> right. <laughs> um, Tom Davis insists upon a 94-foot game. Iowa now wants to make a quick substitution after seeing what Illinois set up with defensively and personnel-wise. Now they make the substitution. Lowhouse comes out. And Jones, Bill Jones goes in. The line eye on the inbounds. That's going to be Kenny Norman. The Iowa Hawkeyes come away with a basketball, and the victory is Kevin Gamble dribbles it away. Tremendous comeback by the Iowa Hawkeyes as they post a come from behind. 91-88 victory over Illinois. That's the end of the game. Again, the final score. Iowa 91, Illinois 88. We'll be back with more comments in a moment.